Good afternoon. Welcome back to Passionate World Talk Radio Network, a wholly owned subsidiary of Global Media Network, LLC, to educate, to enlighten, to entertain. And today, all unless we forget historical, we will continue the mini series on choosing the right vice president and exactly how they are chosen. And please stick with me for the remainder of the show and you possibly may pick up something really helpful to you. While most vice presidents don't have a very hectic life as vice president or many onerous duties to do, they are chosen and when they are chosen is usually quite intensive, highly selected and well-documented as to why each candidate was chosen to become vice president. Now we already know that they cannot pick a vice president from the same state that is forbidden. However, they are and can be selected from different states and most of the time, if not all the time, they're chosen from the same party. For our current election, 2024-2025, when the president does become president in January, the two potential candidates for presidents have gone about to select their potential running mates. For the Dem Democrats under Camilla Harris, the list of possible running mates are governors, Josh Shapiro from Pennsylvania, Roy Cooper from North Carolina, Andy Bisher from Kentucky, and Mark Kelly from Arizona. And then when former President Donald Trump was trying to select, he had these candidates that he considered. Governor Doug Burgum from North Dakota, Senator Mark Rubio from Florida, but he ultimately decided on selecting Senator J.D. Vance from Ohio. One epitential presidential candidate chooses. They usually look for governors and senators, and these candidates are preferred above all others. Governors are a good choice because they have already had government experience, been duly elected, represented a state with rather large population. So that helps them a lot. Aaron Dusso, a political science associate professor at Indiana University told the Washington Examiner Governors are preferred because they already have experience in the executive branch at the state level. They have run a state, while again, not the same size as the United States, excuse me, but it's seen as the same type of job and they have won statewide elections. So that's the number one place where parties look to choose a vice president. Senators are also common to pull from as they have also won statewide elections as compared to a House representative who may only be popular in their district and have less national attention and recognition as those who have run a larger pool. Pretty much every senator thinks that they're going to be president someday, do so continued. Recently now with Biden, and Obama, we've seen some success for senators getting there. And obviously, Camilla Harris is the PB from the Senate and is now going to be the nominee. So the Senate is second place. It's another path to the governor. Although I think parties too prefer the governor path. If you're a governor and from a battleground state, that's going to be a prime target a prime individual to potentially be a vice president. While Harris's box does check all the boxes, former President Trump's did not. 
And although his former vice president, Mike Pence, was chosen, they are all from non-competitive Republican states. And because of that, he won in 2016. The jury is still out whether he will win with his chosen Mr. Vance. Vetting process for possible picks. Once a list is compiled, the candidates for vice president are then sent vetting materials. According to do so, vetting materials include providing statements and personal information, such as bank account information or even the existence of foreign bank accounts. He goes on to explain, it's like a background check. You're trying to unearth all those skeletons, not necessarily because you wouldn't pick someone, but you want to be ready for a campaign. One campaign is not like being unprepared. So you need to be prepared if you possibly want to run for either vice president or president. These are things you need to keep in mind, not only politically, but in how you serve the people because you're supposed to represent us, not your own personal vendettas or your own personal agenda. And Dusso calls on to say, so even if you have some things that are not great on your, your past, for example, and it doesn't necessarily exclude you, we want to be prepared for when it comes to light or when it's going to be talked about. We want to have our talking points ready to go. We don't want to be blindsided by something. He continued, for example, when Clinton was found sleeping with one of his aides. He said, even though vice presidential picks have usually been evaluated at the state level, vetting materials give campaigns one more chance to unearth everything about a candidate, whether he takes drugs, recreational drugs. I don't think that it's necessary, but you need to think about balancing the ticket when it comes to demographics of the individual, which has emerged as an important aspect of picking a running mate. All the things that Harris has in common with the choice of her vice president is they're all white men. Think about it. Sort of like Obama and Biden, one black, one white. They balance each other out. He refers to the 80s and 90s. And he says, you want to be able to balance the ticket geographically. So you wouldn't necessarily want to run two people from the Northeast, want to have some balance that way, maybe one from the East, one from the South, maybe one from the East, one from the Northwest or the West. Have a Southerner and a Northerner, for example. He added, that's kind of fallen by the wayside at this point. And then it's more about demographic concerns, but it's also noted there, there's been a recent political shift. There hasn't been much evidence that ultimately that is a key to winning. Winning, However, there is still a law prohibiting candidates on a ticket to be from the same state. This was a challenge for Trump when he was considering Rubio also from Florida and has struck Governor Galvin Newsom, California from consideration as Harris's running mate. The best evidence we have is that the state you come from can turn out a little better for their favorite son or daughter to support them. The average person typically doesn't know much about the vice president, Dusu noted that the general electorate will be in a unique situation in 2024 in which people are learning about both Harris and her future running mate at the same time. 
Dusa continues to say, learning about both candidates as once could upend how the vice president is viewed. Something for you to take in consideration. Maybe the Congo combo, excuse me, the intake among people and the information they gain about both of them at the same time does play a different role than it does historically. Because normally it would be, we'll talk about the vice president for a couple of months in the summer, and then we forget all about them. Unless, of course, something happens to the president of the United States, whether he becomes incapacitated physically, whether he becomes sick or he has Alzheimer's, although that didn't stop former President Reagan when he was in his office during his second term, he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Bet you didn't know that. So something for you to think about. It's just not the fact that the potential president running for president should consider, but also the entire population of the United States should consider very carefully. And this is what you've all been waiting for for the ending of the program. And this is what you need to consider carefully. Your vice president is one heartbeat away from becoming president of the United States. If one could go back in time and select a better vice president for Abraham Lincoln than Johnson, they probably would have done it. Both the House and the Senate did not expect the kind of president that Johnson was, and he almost got impeached because his views ran pretty much along the same lines as the former president, Abraham Lincoln. So be careful what you wish for. So on one hand, you have Trump and Vance, and on the other hand, you have Harris and her potential pick. And what you have to decide is what is more important to you. If you want to make America great again, you have to be careful that you don't want a government taking over totally. Do you know that the United States has been compared with the history of Rome? In fact, a very famous science fiction writer wrote a whole series about his future based on the collapse of the Roman Republic that turned into a dictatorship. Something for you to think about for the days following up for the November 2nd election. Thank you very much for listening to the program today. You can see it or hear it all over again at youtube.com forward slash PWR network PW talk radio. You can also see it at https colon forward slash forward slash passionate world talk radio.com facebook.com forward slash passionate world radio x at at pwtr and all the other major platforms and social media sites that passionate world talk radio.com uses. This program is brought to you by The Obstacles of Podcasting, a two-month certified training program for anyone in middle school, high school, college, university, junior college, public schools, charter schools, private schools, schools at home, beginner, advanced, intermediate podcasters who want to become successful in the path of a giant their podcast and also sponsored by ruby r-u-b-i dot i-e excuse me dot i-a please go over to https colon forward slash forward slash esc73 dot try t-r-y ruby r-u-b-i dot a-i and don't be left behind thank you have a great weekend and i will see you next week